continue in it. They've been reading the scriptures, and and we'll just get it here and there. And Brother Walter talked the last few Sundays, and we'll just get it. Uh, sometimes we get tired from revival, but I wasn't in revival this week. We'll be in revival next week, so I thought it'd be a good time to pick back up in Galatians, uh, chapter number, uh, chapter number three, and we'll start reading at verse fifteen. Before I do that, uh, I want to always bring up and tell you what's going on here. This was a church, a church that was established by the Apostle Paul uh, in the preaching of faith. And of course, we know the battle with the Jews and the battle with his own people always was the righteousness coming by the law. In other words, things that they did and things that they did not do, uh, they put a crown on their head and called that the righteousness of God. And when Paul came, he preached faith in Jesus Christ and they accepted the Lord. They come out from under the curse of the law and now they're walking by faith in Jesus. But just like always, just like always in young converts' life and, and even, in old, even in older Christians' lives, there's always somebody or something that will come into your life that will affect you to try to pull you away from the work of God. Try to pull you away from the things of God. Now you've got to identify them people and them things. The Bible said mark them that cause division among you. Now that ain't always people that's causing uh, bicker down the church. It may be division in your own life. Amen. You've got to de determine who they are. And sometimes you may have to uh, uh, say, well, I'm, I'll be your friend. I'll try to be good to you. But I just can't fellowship with you no more. For the Bible said, uh, and you don't have to tell them that, but you can just withdraw yourself. The Bible said, how can two walk together except they agree? Now, everybody ain't got the same goals that you have. Paul found this church in trouble. He had established them through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now they are, these people has come in and he identified them. And he said, uh, I don't know who they was that beguiled you. I don't know who they was that crept in and tried to lead you away. But he even said that an angel or anybody would try to preach any other gospel than what was birthed you into the family. He said, I would to God that they would be cut off. So I wanted to bring you into light uh, in the chapter 3 where we're at. Let's pick up with that. Verse 15, brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though if it but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed that no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not. And see chapter 3 and verse 16. Chapter 3 and verse 16. I'm sorry if I didn't tell you. And uh, he said, And he saith not, and the seeds as of many but as of one, and to the seed which is Christ. Now, we know that there's been many of a good man that come out of the lineage of Abraham. But all of them men, although they were seeds that led up to Christ, they was not the seed itself. That's what every one of them prophets prophesied about. That's what every one of those uh, folks looked for. Hebrews said they saw the promise, they embraced it, but they never obtained it. They never uh, uh, was, was given the promise. But now Paul is able to preach to these Jews, amen, that the promise has been given. It was come all the way back from the promise of Abraham, the covenant that was annulled by God, that out of his loins was going to come the seed. The seed, notice that. The seed, singular. Amen. If it would have been seeds, it would have been mankind. It would have been humanity. So God had to special, amen, ordain a seed that came out of a different lineage. And that's why when uh, the Bible said that he came out of a different priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, why was he, did the priesthood come from Melchizedek? Well, if it would have been from the Levitical priesthood, they was not suffered to live because of death. Like Brother J.D. said, they had sin. They had to die. But this seed had to be different. This seed had to come from God Himself. When Mary was told by the angel that she would conceive. Now when, you, when a woman conceived, what does she have? She has a seed. Amen. And when she was told by the angel, she said, Lord, how can this be knowing that I've never known a man? I've never been with a man. But the Lord said, that that cometh upon you is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't know what no sin is. 
it come upon her, it overshadowed her, and it made a seed. That was the seed. And Paul is now trying to explain to these people that is taking the, the, the Mosaical law and justifying who they are and the righteousness that they obtain. He's telling them that this seed came by Jesus Christ. Look at verse 17. And this I say that the covenant was confirmed before God in Christ, that which was 430 years after cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Now, no one was ever able to keep the law of God. When Jesus looked to those Pharisees and Sadducees, amen, even the most holy ranks in that day, even the most holy ranks, He looked at them and said, none of you keep the law. But the one that was speaking to them was keeping the law. The one that was speaking to them because you remember when they brought the woman that was caught in the act of adultery? The Bible said that Jesus looked to that, to, to that crowd that day after He rode in the sand and said, Ye without sin, I guess there were some pretty high ranked officials there that had drugged that woman that probably in the eyes of the town and the eyes of the people they felt like they was pretty high in righteousness. But Jesus simply looked to them and said, Ye without sin, let him cast a stone at her. Being condemned by what? The law. You see, the law is, is a curse. Not the law itself, but the keeping of the law is the curse. No man is able to do that. The Bible said being convicted in their own conscience. They left one by one walking away. They realized they had no right to take that stone and to condemn another because they, amen, was under the same guilt and the same condemnation. Paul is explaining to them that all of the seeds that come from Abraham, amen, was different than the seed. Because when the seed came, he kept the law. Here's what he said. No, he said he was separate from sinners. No guile found in his mouth. He was tempted in all points. Somebody said, preacher, was he tempted? I had a man ask me. He said, you reckon the Lord was tempted to be a homosexual? I said, sure he was. Was he tempted to be a, an adulterer? Sure he was. Was he tempted to be a pedophile? Sure he was. He was tempted in all points. But he looked at sin in the eye. He looked at sin and just imagine sin is this big monster and, and that's who it was under the law. Just imagine under the law sin pointed to every man and with that point, with that finger, he condemned man. He condemned man. But when Jesus showed up, the Bible said he condemned sin. He took his finger and pointed back at sin and say, I condemn you. He that knew, knew, knew no sin, he said, what is, what is, how, in Romans chapter 8, how, is it, how does the scripture say? Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He condemned sin, was made sin for sin. He was the first one that ever came. To, and, and now, who in the world would want to go back under, amen, the guilt and the condemnation of the law? Well, it's people that is being led astray. By, by high officials in the church. It's people that's being led astray because they have been so used to the Jewish customs and the laws, the keeping of the laws and the Sabbaths and, amen, the drinks and, and, uh, and all these things were carnal commandments. No one was ever able to keep them. But yet, the reason why they liked them is because one brother could esteem himself higher than another. If a poor man didn't have no sheep to bring on the day of sacrifice, and here come a man with all these uh, hundred pretty little old sheep that didn't have a spot, he could say, well, look at me compared to you. But there ain't nobody in this church under the cross can raise their head above anybody else. From the preacher to the deacon to the one that got saved last night, there's nobody can do that. Ain't you glad for Jesus? Because if we put our, our, our praise in the righteousness of what man does, we'll get esteem. We'll get and we'll esteem man. But now they ain't but one man to point to. Now they ain't but one sacrifice to point to. Now they ain't but one God that we can say praise the Lord to. And that's the Lord Jesus. He said in verse 19, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression, till the seed come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator but one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. 
For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Paul is saying this was given by God. He was the mediator that sent this down and was giving it to the, to the body of Christ, was giving it to the believers. And he said, amen, if righteousness can be established by what we're doing, he said Jesus, and on over in the chapter, he said Christ would have died in vain. He wouldn't have ever, ever went, amen. You say, preacher, I don't understand. Well, let me explain it to you. If, if, if the, doing a righteous work would have done it, John the Baptist could have been our Savior. We could all just went down to the water, amen, and got baptized with a righteous act. Amen, a righteous act. But that water wouldn't wash away our sins. All the way back in Genesis, it said, without the shedding of blood. Amen, there is no remission. They had to be an atonement. They had to be a blood sacrifice. The blood under the law was nothing but animals. Amen, that's all that it was. And it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Paul ain't doing nothing but preaching to these Jews. Amen. And looking at them, and if I was there, I'd say, you're crazy. Why in the world would you want to go back under the mosaical law of guilt and condemnation when you can walk in the fullness of the gospel? In liberty. In liberty. Under the law, they was condemned year around. Oh, I know it, I know it just pushed the sin dead on for another year. That's all that it did. It pushed it on for another year. And they probably felt good about that. But it didn't change the nature of man. It didn't change the nature. In other words, if you took a sheep down to your Levitical priest, and every one of you had come out of a tribe if, you're, if, you're, if you was a Hebrew, you ever, and we ain't even got to the Gentiles yet, I'm just telling you about the Hebrews. Every one of you had a Levitical priest. And you would take your lamb for your family. You would eat that lamb. And you'd give that lamb to that priest. And he would take that blood and make that atonement. But if you came a drunkard, you left a drunkard. If you came a gambler, you would leave a gambler. Even though they took the sin and the offering of sin to do what God said to do, it never changed the nature of what mankind was. That's why when we sang, amen, nothing but the blood, you don't need to sit there and bite your fingernails. Amen. You don't need to be flipping through a songbook. When we sing about the blood, everybody ought to be standing to their feet saying, thank you, God. Because if you've seen yourself before the way God sees you, before the blood of Jesus was applied, amen, he sees you as a dirty, oh, preacher, I did this and I do that. Honey, when you get to heaven, you ain't going to tell God nothing what you did. Amen. I don't care what, who you are. The, how did John see them coming with white robes on? What did they have them washed in? The blood of the Lamb. That's how you're going to get there. Amen. You ain't going to get in by what you do and what you don't do. Amen. If you could do that, you'd be back under the law. But preacher, you preach all the time, amen, about what we should do and what we do. do. After the blood is applied, there is things you need to do to show you've been under the blood. To show you've been under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Scripture, verse 22, the Scripture hath concluded all are under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to them that believe. Now this promise has not been given, amen, to, it's been given to the whole world. Let me tell you the way Paul told Timothy. He said he's the Savior to all men, especially unto those that believe. There's people right now, amen, that does not know this God in heaven. They know Him by name, but they don't know Him in heart. I've got people and family and friends that they know who Jesus is. They know He's the man that died on the cross. But they've not believed the report. That's what Isaiah said. Who have believed the report? That's the thing that we're longing for is to get our people to believe the report. Paul said, I preached and you believed. You believed. You've got to believe this thing. Amen. For it to come real in your life. If you come and got anointed and prayed for and you went home and you were still sick, you've got to keep believing. You've got to keep believing. You've got to believe. Amen. Believe in the Son of God, that God is not going to let you down. 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. All this Old Testament was, well, let's read it and it'll tell you. Verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The only people in the eyes of God today, I don't, religion don't mean a thing. Amen. A lot of folks don't like this today because they esteem their righteousness in their denomination. They esteem their righteousness in their doctrine. 
They esteemed their righteousness. I had a man a few weeks ago. He said, what are you? I said, I'm a Christian. Well, what kind of denomination are you at the church? I ain't got none. What do you preach? Preach Christ and Him crucified. Amen. I mean, we don't, we don't go, we don't, we don't esteem and highly exalt them things that are a man. He become an abomination. I ain't never needed man and man's denominations and man's doctrines. We preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the full gospel from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. It don't matter if you want to take them down to the river under Acts two thirty eight. Baptize them in the name of Jesus. Baptize them. It's the full gospel. I ain't got to scratch my head and look over the river. If you want to take them down the last chapter in Matthew and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, baptize them. I ain't going to argue with all that junk. I ain't got time. My peoples are going to hell. I ain't going to get caught up in that junk. Amen. It's foolishness. That's all it is. This Old Testament, amen, from Genesis to Malachi was nothing. And you need to read, when you read the Old Testament, you need to read it with this in your mind. It will make so much more joy to you when you read the Old Testament if you will look for Christ in everything. And I promise He's there. He is there. He is in every chapter. Amen. You read about that angel that come down, amen, and met with uh, Abraham. You meet, you meet about that, uh, that bush, amen, about that angel in that bush. You want to know who that was? You read what Stephen said in book Acts chapter 7. That, that voice that came out of that burning bush, that was Jesus. I can see him in everywhere. In Song of Solomon, have you seen him whom my soul loveth? <laughs> I can see him everywhere, Sharon. Hallelujah. I can see him in Jonah in the, in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. I can see him in Genesis when Noah built the ark. When Jesus died, he built an ark. I can see him everywhere. And all this was, Brother James, was a schoolmaster and appointing to lead us something to better. Paul said in the book of Hebrews, he said if the first covenant was perfect, he said there would have been a, a second one sought after. But this, this first one, it wasn't the, the, it wasn't the fault with the covenant, it was humanity. Brother J.D. was testifying this morning and I just about screamed out this morning while he was testifying, J.D. Hey, you told us that the flesh, you battle the flesh and anybody in here that's fighting for the Lord understood exactly what you're saying. And I'm going to tell you the only thing that was going to get us out of that and it's called death. And God turned death into a blessing. That's the only thing. Death used to be an enemy. Death used to be something that was to be feared. Death used to be something that we was going to all have to fight. Amen. And it was going to conquer us. It held bondage over us. But when Jesus died and became the first fruit of the resurrection, everything in its order. That's what Paul said. Everything in its order. When he became the first fruit of the resurrection. Now when we die, Paul said it like this. I'm far better. For me to die is far, far better. Who but Jesus could do something like that? Amen. He said, after the faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. So I'm not no longer now under the Mosaical law of, of Sabbath days and, amen, of a feast of tabernacles and feast of wheats and Pentecost and all. I'm no longer under that. Amen. I have, that has been done away with. Now here's what the Bible said. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible said that when Moses came down off of the mountain and brought the Ten Commandments, the Bible said that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look upon him, that he had to put a veil over his face because it was so glorious. What he had in their hand was nothing but condemnation. It was the Ten Commandments. And the Bible said if the condemning of them was glorious, how much more glorious are is the glory of the Spirit that we've been changed from the image of who we are to the image. I'm getting ready to feel something right there. Are you picking it up this morning, what I'm saying? That law did nothing but point and condemn, point and condemn, point and condemn. David was a good man, but it got him. Jeremiah was a good man, but it got him. Amen. Ezekiel was a good man, but it got him. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemning sin for sin. In the flesh, He walked in the body of mankind and condemned it. i got to go on. In verse number 27, for as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on, have put on Christ. Amen. That's what the child of God has done when he got saved. 
He put on bowels of mercy. He put on love. He put on joy. Amen. When the Lord gets inside of you, there's something, a change. Amen. Paul said it, or Peter said it, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. John chapter number 1. Everybody knows John chapter 1. John chapter 1 said they, amen, that uh, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Ain't you glad for grace? I got to tell you the story real quick. Amen. Time's about up. I got to tell you the story real quick, but Brother Ronnie told up there in the revival. I done told it here two weeks ago, but I'm going to tell it like y'all ain't never heard it again. Abraham Lincoln had found a soldier that escaped the, hey man, that escaped the, uh, the, the, the war, the Civil War, was returning home. Brother Ronnie said that he had read this in a book, and he said that that man was sentenced to death, and had wrote home to his, to his mother and said, this boy is sentenced to die because he has escaped the army. He has been, never been away from home. He just wanted to go back home. An old country boy raised in the mountains, he wanted to go back home. Mother got down and said, if you will show him grace, if you will have mercy upon him, he's never been away from home. He's never been away from anybody here at the house. Just show him grace and show him mercy. Abraham Lincoln wrote the mother back and said, if this man don't deserve grace. This man has uh, uh, left the army. He's left the, his platoon. He don't deserve grace. The mother got the letter back down and got a letter back down and wrote it and said, if he deserved grace, it wouldn't be grace. If I deserved grace, it wouldn't be grace. Oh, I ain't even got to the Gentiles yet. We're still on the Jews. I, I'm talking about a whole different nationality of who you are in here. That's in chapter number four. That's when the roof's supposed to go off of this place. Amen. We'll go on until they come. He said, now I say, oh, let me verse 20. Where am I at, Clyde? 28, there is therefore, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male, no, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if Christ, if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and then heirs according to the promise. Oh, if you could get the depth of that right there the people that don't ever do nothing in church would be a running right now. If you could get the depth of that right there, that no, no longer we are aliens, no longer are we separated from the covenant, no longer are we called the uncircumcised, no longer are we called strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. But now, through faith, through faith, we have put on the seed of Abraham. When this testimony first came to Abraham, one of the old prophets said, Hey, Abraham, he said, The children, amen, that are barren, he said, The mother that's desolate is going to bring forth more children than the real mother. You say, Preacher, I don't understand it. Now, I ain't going to get in a big revelational thing because I ain't got enough sense to talk about it. But in Revelation, amen, every one of the tribes were sealed. 12,000 of this tribe, 12,000 of that tribe. But John looked and said, I saw a number that no man can number. He said, I saw a number that no man can number. And somebody in the prophecy, amen, wrote, he said, blessed are the barren. Woo! Blessed are the barren. He said, who is this that cometh from Basra with dyed garments on in the fullness of his strength? He said, I looked to my right and there was no one to help. I looked to my left and there was no one to help. He said, with my own strength, with my own power, he said, I will go in and I will redeem them. Hallelujah. That's what Christ did. Amen. He brought the Gentiles over. Amen. Into the body of Christ. And if I don't get to tell you something, I'm going to tell you this. Before the, before the kids come in here. I was reading the scriptures this morning. I was just, I'm going to look around here and make sure she's not in here. The little girl, Caitlin, that we keep. Amen. Sometimes I get to preaching and I talk about my four children. But I've got five. I've got five. She calls me daddy. She calls Christy mama. Sometimes in my preaching I just get that mixed up. But the Bible in this chapter number 4 is getting ready to tell us how we that are, amen, the Gentiles have been adopted in and God has given us the spirit of adoption and He's led us to cry out a Father. And I got to thinking about that this morning. When, when, when Caitlin first come to our house, 
I was Jason and she was Christy. Amen. I was Jason and she was Christy when she first come to our house. And I still got a video over there. Amen. When, when Hannah got married and moved out, we took her room and we painted it and we made a, and we made a room for her and for Christmas or our birthday one. And we kept it hid from her. And we took her down the, down the hallway there and, and brought her in there. It was her, she had never had her own bedroom before. She had never had her own bedroom before. She'd never, when, when she first come to the house, she'd go to the, she'd go to the kitchen cabinets and she'd take cakes and she'd hide them. We'd find them under the couch. We thought we had rats. She didn't have no food. She was hiding food. Are y'all hearing me? Oh yeah, there's all kinds of people like this. All kinds of people like this. I didn't ask for her, but God put her in our life. And now, we, now, the, now we, we're going to try to raise her just like she's our, just like our daughter. But when she first came, amen, when she first came, she'd always call me Jason. And she'd call Chris. But the more that we tried to behave, if we'd get one young and something, we'd get her something. If we'd do something for one, we'd do something for the other. The more we'd done that, I'll never forget the day that I heard her call Christy, Mama. 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 And then, then just a few weeks, she called her because she, you know, Mama's a whole lot nicer than Daddy's. And then just a few weeks later, she called me Daddy. She called me, and Christy said, Christy said, now listen to me. Don't you tell none of your children that because children to me, they'll go home and aggravate her about it. Don't you tell none of your children about that. But one day Christy said, one day she, had, she, is, she is sick or something and she's home up there with her. Christy stayed with her. She said, I bet you she's called me mommy a hundred times today. Mommy, 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 mommy. You see, through time, God has put the spirit of adoption in her. When she first came, when she, I'm getting ready to run outside. When she first came, it wasn't there. She didn't trust us. She didn't know us. But through time, through time, and through the spirit of adoption, it may not be legal out in the country, out in the, in the, in the, in the, in the courthouse. It may not be legal out there, but it don't matter. She's our daughter. And, 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 she, and I'm her daddy and Christy. And when the Gentiles come into the body of Christ, amen, when we come into the body of Christ, it didn't take no time at all. The blink of an eye, the snap of a finger, when we come up off the altar, you know what we have? The spirit of adoption. And just like that, just like that, we look at God who was God, Jehovah, Almighty. And never before we look at Him and we say, Father, Father, oh God, Father, I've never been able. And, and when, Jesus, when Jesus was asked by His disciples to pray, this was so, I mean, He was called Jehovah Jireh in the Old Testament. He was called, amen, all of these, Mighty God. All of these things, Brother Christ. All of these things. But nothing ever was said like this. And the disciples said, Lord, John's disciples taught them how, told, John told them how to pray. Well, you teach us how to pray? And nobody had ever said anything like this. And Jesus said, when thou prayest, pray like this. Our Father. First time in the Bible. Our Father. Which art in heaven. How I be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can you call him Father? Father. Father. That's why, no matter what your youngins do to you, and no matter how bad they are and how misbehaving they are, you still love them. You still care about them. They're still your child. That's why when you feel like you need to be kicked under the rug and God just sends you on to hell because of your unfitness and your unworthiness and your everything, and you go to Him and you cry, Father, it catches His eye. You let Zach Nunley call me today and say, Daddy, every Sunday morning when I come to church, I text him and I say, I love you, son. I want him to know he's my son. I'm his father. Ain't you glad you saved? Ain't you glad you know the Lord? 
God put that spirit in you. He put that spirit in you. And now, if you'll excuse me, now if you'll, amen, if there's a supper table, if there's a supper table, amen, and David and Moses and Daniel and Jeremiah and his Ezekiel's there, no Jason walks in. shout over that you ain't seen what I've seen come on sir Kimberly will you send them boys for me take, take these off and just Thank you, Jesus. 